Thunder, Thunder, Thundercats, ho! Hello, Bots and Books fans, this is Scorp1701, and tonight we are going to be taking a look at the Super 7 Ultimates Thundercats Slythe. Now, this figure has been a long time coming. He was part of the third wave of the Super 7 Thundercats. Of course, I should say that a second wave hasn't even hit our shelves yet, but uh, we got Slythe, and that's all that's important. All right, so first off, we'll be taking a look at the box, and the box is incredibly large. This is the brown cardboard mailer that all the Super 7 Thundercats come in. You have Thundercats here, Slythe, ages 14 plus, Super 7. You turn it around to the back, and you got some credits for the box and a barcode, and that's pretty much it for the mailer. But as you can see on the side here, a normal... Thundercats Ultimates box usually ranges from about this size, but uh, this is going to be a fairly large figure, so he needs a fairly large box. So anyway, getting this cardboard mailer out of the way, we can see the beauty that lies within, which is the Super 7 Ultimates boxes and they are beautiful with this nice black and red glossy shine and you can see Mumra's evil twin snake symbol there Thundercats ages 14 plus Super 7 Slythe and on the top of the box you have Ultimates and then on the side nothing and on the other side nothing on the bottom of the box you just got some credits for the box and a barcode which is not that great and finally on the back of the box you have the awesome Thundercats logo with contacts, one figure with accessories, and Super 7. So that is awesome. So we'll flip it back around to the front. And ah, I just love that red foil. That is just so pretty. All right. So what we will do now is remove the slip cover so we can actually see some of the figure goodness. So we will bring it up, bring it up, bring it up, and boom. There is the mischievous Slythe in all of his plastic glory, and he looks awesome, and I can't wait to get him out of there. But we got to take a look at the, what we have just revealed, and you have Slythe there, you have an alternate head there, and you have Thundercats logo there now. On this side of the box, still nothing. On this side of the box, still nothing. Same on the top, same on the bottom. But when we come around to the back, we see some awesome artwork of Slythe and you have Super 7 and if we scroll in really closely we can take a look at this cool read up of Slythe so I will leave it there for just a moment you can pause it read it to your heart's content but we must be moving on so that is going to be your Slythe box but no one wants to see Slythe in the box I know I don't so let's get him out and see what he can do. And here we have Slythe out of the box. And out of the box, he comes with some weapons and alternate hands and an alternate head. And to the very tip of his back fin, he stands at approximately six and a half inches, which is really cool. But let's take a closer look at this maniacal mutant himself. And coming real close in on Slythe, this fellow is a big, huge hunk of plastic, and he actually has a lot of good weight to him too. But taking a look at the sculpt and the mold and the paints, he is beautifully done. I love the way this guy came out, and he is just a grotesque looking mutant. Uh, and uh, starting off with his head, his head is done in a nice uh, reptilian form. He has some nice ears coming out the side here that are two-toned with your green and blue. And the green parts are all 
textured with some scalish like warty skin layers kind of looks froggish I guess and then he has a nice little head uh, armor piece here with a nice red jewel in the center nice creepy reptilian eyes with the slant going down the center little nose sculpted in there some mouth pieces here with a nice light blue and you can see some teeth sticking out of the side of this particular head and coming down to the bottom you can actually see the chin goes all the way down and that is really cool and uh, same as the other side you got the ears and the back is just hunched up and you have these little green details and these are not painted these are molded pieces into the sculpt so they're all raised up a bit and you can see some more of the textured skin wow that is neat and then you have these little back spikes protruding up and they are nicely done they're very thin plastic and uh kind of sharp but not really so i mean you could like file them down and get some real damage out of this guy but whoa and then coming back to the front and the chest he has again the two tones here with the blue for the belly and the screen coming off the sides like a good reptile should have on the right arm he has kind of a little bracelet here at the uh, start of the bicep and on this side he has a bracer down here at the wrist so those are a couple armor pieces going back to uh, the midsection he has this strap that comes around and forms his belt and loincloth this is one piece i'm not exactly sure how they got that on there i guess they kind of put it on his waist and then fed his arms through the straps here going around to the back you can see it comes down to this nice yellow belt and loincloth here and then you can see the tail tail is nice ridges and curves up a lot of blue on the underside that is so cool and if you actually look inside the hands you also get the blue so basically all these soft points uh, are gonna be two-toned like the bottom of the feet here that is neat got some toe claws sticking out there and yeah wow again I think they did a fantastic job on the sculpt and mold of this guy. The color, I thought when I first saw some pictures that he was going to be too light, but I think this is perfect. And uh, I am very happy with the way this came out. There is a little bit of paint scuffing here on my belt section, which kind of looks like I scraped a little bit. But, you know, you can chalk that up to battle damage, I suppose. And uh, yeah. That is what Slythe is going to look like. Moving on. And for articulation, I am really impressed with the amount of articulation this guy has on him for being such a bulky and uh, smaller figure. But uh, smaller being that, you know, his proportions, like his legs and his arms are kind of... Uh, compact well not his arms but his legs are kind of squat down here but anyway looking at the articulation starting at the head the head can look up just a little bit if you're looking from the side and then he can look down a lot and basically it can wiggle from side to side you cannot really turn it all the way around because of the way it's formed onto the body it's not like a up and down it's basically coming out to the side so you do get a lot of left and right wiggle room to it but it won't go all the way around which is okay and that still kind of gives you a lot of good motion and creepiness because if you do try to do it all the way around it will pop off the joint that it's on but you can kind of get this good uh, also head waggle again so that is cool coming to the shoulders the shoulders are on a ball joint and they can go all the way around 360 degrees they are hinged so they can come up from the body and then go back down to the body eh. They are stiff, so be careful when you're working them out. There is no bicep swivel because this is one solid piece, and that will bring you down to the elbow hinge, and it's not exactly 90 degrees. It's just slightly under, or, you know, you might now. I think it's just slightly under because the arms are so beefy, but 
it is built into a forearm rotation so that can go all the way around 360 degrees and that will bring you down to the wrist and hand and it can go all the way around 360 degrees and there is a hinge built in there so it can go in and out up and down however you got it twisted at the time so that is very nice all right uh waist articulation no well you know what uh, yeah there is waist articulation built in so you can get a little bit left and right but the reason i say no is the armor strap will not allow you to really move his waist too far because it's connected so if there was a way to take this off i'm sure based on how it feels you could get 360 degrees of waist articulation in there so that again is impressive coming down to the legs the legs can go up a little ways like such they can go back a little ways like such ah, move their hand out of the way there slide and they can go out to the side a long ways so that is where you're going to get a lot of your distance and then it will come down it does have a thigh rotation 360 degrees will get you around there and that will bring you down to his knee and knee is just a single hinge and i don't know this is the way it's built it actually looks like it comes up to 90 degrees i guess but that's okay if it doesn't and then the knee like the elbow is built into a i guess you'd call this a boot cut because of the position that it is in goes all the way around 360 degrees brings you down to the actual foot and the foot can go up and the foot can go down a little bit so that is cool and it is on a rocker to take you all the way around the world 360 degrees if you are so inclined all right so like i said there is a lot of articulation in this guy for being so small and bulky but that is not it because we can go around to the back and the tail is articulated it doesn't bend really it's basically one solid piece but it is to the point where you can twist it around 360 degrees if you are so inclined so that is really neat all right and that is sly's articulation moving on and the first accessory we're going to take a look at for a slide is this neat alternate head now there isn't a lot of difference between this head and the original head that he comes packaged with as you can see here but you do have an open mouth in this one and i like that you can see his little tongue in there a little bit of pink and you can see more teeth coming off the side the eye is slightly open larger here and slanted here as opposed to it is on this side um so yeah i really like this alternate head a lot better so i think i will display him with that the only problem i do have with this alternate head is there is, does appear to be some minor paint uh blemishes on the inside of the eye here it's kind of like a streak that missed paint and there's a little uh non-paint here on the side of the mouth but you know if you're looking that close i think you're looking too close which is how queen bravo often says things so anyway yeah that is going to be your alternate head moving on and for the next accessories we're going to take a look at he has this set of alternate hands now these are opened a little wider than the weapon holding hands and i guess they could be considered grabby hands or you know i'm gonna get you <laughs> Kind of creepy skulky hands and uh, i like them because you know you can use them to like attack and slash so that is really cool you can determine how you want to hand up your slide <laughs> all right moving on and for his first weapon accessory he has this really gnarled looking axe it looks like it's made out of an old tree branch and you have some nice jagged metal up here for the axe head of course it is all plastic painted in silver but you got a lot of nice details in the blade there looks like there's some chips in the uh, blade makes it look like it's worn and you got a lot of cool detail in the handle itself so that is a really cool x and he could hold this really well as you can see here that is cool and the next axe you have is a little more clean cut it looks like it's 
been manufactured a little better. You have a nice silver tip here that could actually double as a spear. Then you have the axe head. It's done in a nice two-tone color with a dark gray and a lighter gray here at the tip to denote the blade edge. That is cool. And the handle is nicely done in a smooth brown. And then you get to the bottom here and you got some nice detail for the end of the weapon and he could hold this as well and if you're interested yes he could hold both axes at the same time if he was so inclined anyway those are his axes and the last weapon he's going to be able to wield is this ball mace type thingy and it is really nicely done it's just basically a ball with spikes attached to a nice smooth brown stick and again like the second axe it's more polished and worked over than the gnarled one and you got a little bit of paint up here at the top and at the bottom and it's a nice gun metal gray color so yeah and he can hold this really well and he can start bashing some thundercat or jackal men or monkeyans or vulture men yeah, there wasn't any uh shortage of people that slythe could attack in, our, in that show but anyway all right and that is gonna be slythe's weapons moving on and full comparison, here you have Slythe with a Mumra, the decayed form, and Jackalman. And I really like the way that these villains are shaping up, especially the two. And I can't wait to get Monkey in. And then I'll have the three original mutants. And that is just going to look so cool. This Super 7 Thundercat display is just awesome. All right, moving on. And for another comparison, here he has Slythe with the Thundercats. And it looks like he's slipped up lion with his tail. And he's about to go hand-to-hand -hand with Panther, which is the stupidest thing he could do. But it did happen in one of the episodes. And then, you know, it didn't last too long before Slythe ran away. But, you know, <laughs> it happened. And this is a really cool comparison with the cats and Slythe. All right, moving on. And this has been the Super 7 Ultimate Thundercats Slive. And he is just an amazing little figure. I love this guy. I thought I wouldn't like him. I never had him as a kid. And I'm like, eh, I gotta get him because he's... But I am so happy that I did get him because he is so fun to play with. He looks great. And there's not a lot of stuff that this figure, even as big as it is, can't do when it comes to articulation. He has bends, he has twists, he has turns. Super 7 did a remarkable job with the engineering and articulation with this figure, and I loved it. Paint, again, when I first saw the promo pictures i thought it was going to be too light but now that i have it in hand it is just the perfect color i really really love it his accessories were smart and what he used in the cartoon so no problems there the alternate head the alternate hands nothing went into this guy that wasn't useful glad i could finally add him to my collection and i'm just waiting on chitara now because i think she was also part of this third wave so second wave still hasn't shipped out to us the fourth wave i actually have it's in my box i'm just waiting for them to ship it to me and uh, we can look into those so yeah slowly but surely these super seven thundercats are coming our way now you won't be able to find these in your retail stores like walmart or target they are exclusive to the online dimension so you'll have to go to big bad toy store the chosen prime entertainment earth or wherever you shop online for awesome action figures and they will run you about 55 to 60 dollars uh probably a little more with slice because he was a bigger figure than the others but he's worth it all right guys that is the video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you have a great night and until next time keep playing Thank <laughs> you.